wizard! <laughs> what do you think is wrong with the tranny, John? Oh, yeah! Alrighty! Are these wheels gonna spin? For sure. <laughs> oh, I feel the pressure! <laughs> Take a look at the wheel. <laughs> it works. It's alive. <laughs> hey, can you check that boost gauge for me manually? Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> so we're going to hook up the boost gauge right now. And we're going to build some brake pressure boost. here that had the cup holders and the charging ports and the stereo control. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount some of that stuff on the doghouse and then we're going to figure up a new way for the cup holders. I just think it's not going to look good if we mount everything together. Let me turn the lights on. Anymore. There you go, that's better. So this is going to come off and that's going to come off and then we're going to transpose it onto this. this yeah, that fan clutch was noisy so... Uh... That fan clutch was noisy because uh, there was a washer on our idler pulley. Tensioner. Tensioner pulley causing it to, when it when you had it plugged in, it comes close to it and it would just barely tap it every once in a while because the blades are moving. So we yeah, took this bad boy clearances. off three times. Well, Jake took it off three times. I just walked two times. Well, it's been off three times since, four times since we built it. But hey, we got the, the whole entire interior will be done tonight. We got our new handheld coming in from TCI because the other one was bad. We got our new regulator in because the regulator was bad. So basically on this build we've had two bad motors, a bad transmission, a bad generator. Okay, so here's the original doghouse cover. This would be for a naturally aspirated truck. And then here's the turbo doghouse. We, this was supplied by MME. What we're doing is we're taking all the accessories off and we're gonna mount them in place here so that we can use the original locations and it'll go right on. We put a USB charging port and then a cigarette access port because for the TCI transmission module, you need to have it plugged in like this. There is a diode in that plug because we are gonna jump it without the diode, but it's not allowed. Okay, so this is the first plug-in for this TCI, Easy TCU. What we're able to do is set the parameters so that it can shift properly, and then we can also modify it once we start driving it. Oh, look at that light up. There we go. Set up, wizard. There's the difference. Wizard. Nice. That's what I mean, you see the way the numbers are? Jake, what are you doing? Running the cable for the uh, for the tack, so the easy TCU doesn't come with some that'll work with it. Uh, it's supposed to. <laughs> this is the final test drive with the hood off. We have installed the new Dakota digital RPM signal setup. We have all the lights working. Uh, we are topping off all the fluids. We're going to go ensure that this thing shifts as it should. Join us.
looking for the 24 volt harness, we're going to run directly to the gauge pod. This normally is a 12 volt illuminated light in there, but what we did is we swapped it out to LED and I made a nice harness so we can hook it straight up to the pod and it'll light up in red just like the rest of the gauges. All about the details, baby. We just finished doing the dash. We've mounted the boost gauge here. It all works in unison with the LED lights that we've done that are all red. The whole cabin actually lights up in red. We put the USB charging port here and it operates as it should. So you click your switch and you've got yourself some power there. Uh, we replaced all the hardware on the doghouse and retouched it up. And then what we did is we ran our sub control down here because we have the wet sounds AS10 sub. We have a wet sound sound bar. Right now it's setting up the constant power for the EZ TCU. And then we're gonna have a remote wire that you hook up in here. So every time you you know you go to start the truck, you're gonna flip that up. But you have to have constant power to your EZ TCU. Michael, what are all these? What is this? Final drives for an M109 self-propelled howitzer. Oh, that's nice. Redoing them, so that's what they. Oh, that looks that's a new one. It's new to you. New to me. That's what it looked like before. And this guy over here, the, the, the Cuban doctor. <laughs> What's inside this box? Humper, parts, and loads. Spare this is all in Ball joints. Oh, those are ball joints for a Hummer. Yep, uppers and lowers. That's a lot of ball joints. Holy gamolies. Hey, I'm going to the training shop. <laughs> what do you think was wrong with the tranny, John? I think it was slipping. All right, I'm driving the Gold Coast Transmission. We use them for all of our rebuilds. They do high performance rebuilds for us. They're great guys, big shop, and they know what they're doing. We had an issue when we were testing out Warthog. First and fourth gear were slipping and we were getting chattering once we got to full boot. actual clutch plates getting destroyed by the torque. So we would roll in first, try to brake boost it, and it would just spin the clutches. What they're gonna do is they're gonna put some high performance clutches in there, a shift kit, and we're gonna do a different torque converter, and that should totally solve it. Right now, I'm gonna show you the inside of the transmission before we put it together. training shop to pick up Warthog. We got a built transmission with an upgraded clutch, a upgraded torque converter, and a new valve body that's going to shift real good. 
We're gonna go program it. So we've got that easy TCU. Hopefully we can get it set properly. We had a speed issue before this and let's go. Let me turn the air on. Can we just get a transmission controller that, like the one in here? This truck's perfect. This is the best truck in the if world. We can just get the Warthog to emulate what this truck does. We'll be good. Hold on, we got our beat on here. Oh yeah. Got presents for us? Yes, we do. We got a whole bunch for you. Oh, that's good. We're going to the tranny shop. The training shop. Tranny, tranny, tranny. Oh, tranny you know trannies. Come on now. Shit, I don't know. You speak uh, <laughs> salt. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> See ya. All right. There she is. Let me go talk to Vinny and then we'll tune it. All right, we're gonna set up the computer. So I'm gonna turn on that and this one. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna set the transmission. We're gonna go to setup wizard. Yeah. 0.5 volts for idle. Okay, so now he's going to hold it to maximum throttle. Continue. And you'll see it calibrating. Close throttle. Continue. So we're going to turn off the key and the controller. Yeah, just stop. Just stop. You can cycle that one too. Uh, we got about four seconds left. All right. Back on. Transmission on. Run. Because we'll go through the advanced settings and set that up as well. I'm going to go for the first test drive. See, he's the one that built the transmission. What did you guys put in this tranny? So you did red clutches? Yeah, red line. And then, if you're on uh, six. And then five, a different torque. Five. And then a different torque converter. Yep. And a shift kit. Whatever. Let's just start right out. What's the normal idle on this? Should be like 700 or 600? Yeah. yeah, okay, so it's a, it says 600, but that's fine. 650, oh no. Picking up the Humvee Warthog. What we're gonna do so we can adjust the speed sensor so we have crisp shifting is we're gonna be using a Dakota Digital SG5E. What this will do is change the pulses per minute that's coming from the transmission instead of running from the, uh, the transfer case which will cause issues for four wheel drive when you go into low, it won't shift properly. This is gonna be able to convert the signal into exactly what we need and everything's gonna work properly in regards to the speed on the signal 
for our TCI module along with our speedometer. This is bullet. Okay, so here are the springs that come with our uh, wastegate setup. Very flimsy and there's two of them, so what happens is you have to press it so much that they start to bind. What we did is we found a spring. It's a little bit more heavy duty. We're gonna cut it to fit and it should be giving us around 11 to 12 pounds of boost easily. A lot more uh, pressure here. And then it's got a lock washer, which is right here. That looks so much better than two springs breaking against each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? Best looking uh, under the hood shot I've ever seen on a Humvee. I can say that honestly. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. This had a this had a three-way uh, pipe on it, brass fitting. So the line goes to the differentials. It goes to different parts on the truck that they want vented, mainly the differentials. And um, the other, one other place that it went to was the the old mechanical fuel pump. So what we had to do was take off that line because now we have the electronic fuel pump. And so now I'm just putting the ends of that line together to keep it uh, sealed to make it look better. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you can't even see it. We're gonna take the hood off and put the spaces in place. Right here, because we have a body lift on it, we just had that hood on there just to test everything out. Uh, these come with the Predator's kit. Set after that. What you been up to? Uh, just put this box in here. If you want to take a look at it. Sure. We put this new uh, Dakota Digital speedometer. Uh, sort of an adapter. It changes the output of your pickup on the transmission, so that uh, you get the right signal for the input. For okay. the speed input on the uh, on the TCM. Yeah, because the original one was reading how much over? Yeah, quite a bit, uh, like 50 miles an hour, something yeah. like that. So we're so going when we are going 50, you say in 100. Yeah. So that would ruin your shift points. What we've done is we had to before when we talked about the Easy TCU, we were talking about we were going to run power directly off this voltage regulator. And that's what you would normally do if you ran a factory style computer. But this one needs a constant source of 12 volts, so we decided to run a switch. Yeah, and the uh, problem with the regulator is that it's set up so that when, when they designed it, when you turn off the key on the truck, the power still stays on. So that's a big problem. Um, it, it turns off on its own own time so yeah that's a big problem we need it to we don't want it to drain the battery for the ECM right and then we also couldn't use the original uh, what is it the one that reads the RPM we're taking it yeah, out of the tack we couldn't use the original hardware for the tack so we ran another box from Dakota Digital the DSL 1e and that actually converts the crank position or the crank sensor uh, load into a signal and it creates an RPM uh, because with this truck uh, the original the original setup for the, the, the tack is different than what we have on here so. yeah this is a 24 volt motor all manual there's no electronics on it and then we've got a 480 that's electronic and runs off 12 volts so we had to make it work we didn't want to cut corners and run a converter on the transfer case because then if you go in four low it'll have an issue. So we did it the right way. This is definitely the right way. Oh really? Yeah. Look at these guys. The, the thing that's amazing is these are lighter than the ones that were. Since these are aluminum and those are steel. Those things were like stones. These these are gonna these are gonna be so much easier to turn for this thing. Yeah, so we got two choices here. You got this, which the the uh, people are saying that this is sticks out too much. It's got a little bit of bulge. It may uh, 
but it may not look good. So you have this, or you have this. I like, I honestly like no cap because it still looks military. That's just a piece of plastic. But like Let us said, know what you guys think uh, in the comments below. What's your opinion? And uh, I guess we'll see what we'll do from there. What we'll do is we'll leave them off right now, and then whatever the comp, the, whoever has the highest comments, we'll put them on or off. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Just added three layers of insulation. We did the first ride before we burned burn the tranny up, and it was getting pretty hot. So this should cover that. And we got a cup holder mount. Nice. Uh, this is your, your handheld device for setting up your transmission control module. So we're going to monitor how she does on this thing? Yeah, so you got live data. You can go ahead and see what she's doing right now. This gives you your, your RPMs here. You got 700 RPMs at idle, which is a little bit high because we already had it running earlier. So. We got torque converter lockup. Yep. And then you see when I give it throttle, there's your RPM, and then you go to the next one. That's your uh, throttle position sensor. That's the percentage of it down, holding it like 14%. That's your temperature on your transmission. Maybe it's your voltage. Let's do it. This is the first test drive. That's, uh, this is no more. We're done with this. God. We got to wash this thing, I guess. Our temperature is at uh, 147. Feels yeah. good to me. Great idea taking the back doors off. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you got to clean that. Because <laughs> they're kicking up. Right here. Hey, that's what you get laying in the dirt. Let's take it out. We'll do one high speed run and we're done for today. Next video will be the full reveal. We're good. That was sick. So it's been about three hours since our test drive. They dropped me off, haven't picked me up since. It's getting a little bit cold. Um, I don't know if they went home yet. better subscribe or I'm coming to your house.